All right, I'm going to go ahead and start since it's 2.55. Uh, I appreciate you all coming. My name is Luby Shanafelt, and I am the uh, new product manager slash evangelist for Equatio by Textel. And I uh, have some contact information there for you if you'd like to get a hold of me or have questions. Uh, really, really love working for a company and a, uh, you know, spearheading and trying to bring this product uh, up to speed with the latest improvements uh, with digital math. And uh, uh, really excited to be here and join you all today. So I would encourage you to reach out and contact me if you have feedback or questions about how to use this product. Uh, I am extremely responsive and would be more than happy to create a video for you or demo uh, anything that you would possibly need and making math digital and accessible uh, for your school or your district. So there's a couple things I wanted to go over quickly with you before we go into a demo is some characteristics uh, and benefits of accessible math. And you know, one of those is a screen reader can read the equation and sequence through it character by character. And that's more in line with the math ML that our product can provide you. A user can also independently edit and solve the math without any assistance from someone nearby. And Equatio provides images with the alt text sitting behind that image, uh, which makes that math accessible and editable. Um, some other things here that I jot down was the math is searchable by users, and the math can be found inside of documents, as well as the math can be created in the same format that it was presented in. And that's really a big deal, that they can uh, reproduce the math in the same format uh, that they received it. Uh, the other thing here is just AI will have the access to the math, which will enable unlimited ways for users to learn. If you're not familiar with, with, with what MathML is, it is a universal format uh, for math that is easily convertible into visible, audible, tactile, and machine-readable forms. And it also, and I think this is the biggest thing, it supports that oral navigation through complex math equations for better understanding. So if we can provide you the math ML, you would be able to navigate character by character through those math equations. Uh, and, and obviously math ML, for those of you that are familiar with it, it does provide some support for those various braille math formats, which is really important as well. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and scroll through. You guys have access to this presentation, but because of the limited time we have, there's some other side notes in here. If you wanna download the, uh, the slides, you're welcome to. Uh, we also, I'm gonna talk a, a little bit about LaTeX and the demo that I do for you today. Uh, LaTeX, just so you know, is a markup language. It's familiar in many math uh, institutions and those higher ed professors uh, are commonly using LaTeX. We allow our folks and our users to use the LaTeX markup language and we encourage students to learn from LaTeX and you can really create some really profound uh, math equations and sequences uh, using LaTeX. So it is not supported, however, with screen reader technology. So that's a downside of LaTeX, uh, but you can create math in Equatio using LaTeX. So uh, you can make math many, many different ways, which is what I'm gonna show you. There's a couple animated GIFs in the presentation that I shared with you uh, on the website. So if you wanna take these little demos back with you, you're welcome to share these with folks and it'll show you how to make math accessible and digital through the Google platform as well as the Microsoft platform. Uh, so there's the Microsoft demo. Uh, they're about 30 seconds long and it'll loop for you, um, but I can send you uh, a little bit longer videos. If you wanna reach out and contact me, I'd be more than happy to send you something that's a little bit slower speed. Um, when you make a GIF, you want it under 30 seconds, so it's a little bit fast, um, but it'll show you how to use our product to do textbook conversion, which a lot of people are using our product for. Uh, so with that being said, I wanna kinda go into a demo real quick. I'll try and show you the Google representation first, and then we'll move over to Microsoft, so I can kinda show you how our, uh, how our browser, uh, excuse me, how our product works between those two platforms. So I'm in a Google Doc right now, and you will notice that I have a toolbar here at the bottom. Go ahead and close that out real quick to show you how I got here. Notice that Equatio in Google is a Chrome extension, so I can simply click and hover over that blue diamond, and when I select it, you'll notice that it does open very, very fast, a little bit faster than the Microsoft product, 
uh, and you will see at the very bottom here a series of input methods that are available to you to make your math. This product was, was founded on UDL principles. You know, math is just one of those subjects that a lot of kids and adults, frankly, struggle with. So we, we thought that the best scenario would be is to give users multiple ways to make their math. We just want them to be successful. If they want to make math using an equation editor, I can pop that open and I can use what we determine is, well, we obviously think our product is the best because of our prediction engine and the things we have in it. But I can do simple or complex math algebraic things right into our equation editor. If I type in something like 12x cubed, notice how cubed, I don't need to type in a superscript. I can just type in cu, and our prediction engine is predicting that we want to make 12x cubed. If I want to make subtraction, I don't want to teach those keyboarding skills, so I can keep my fingers on the home rows of the keys, and I can do minus, M-I-N, and hit enter, and notice the subtraction sign goes in. Then I might have 10y squared. Notice I just type 10y sq, and I can tap enter because the squared is there. And then for equals, I'm just going to type EQ, make my equal sign, and let's say something like 17. So once I've made my math, notice that you might say, well, Louis, can you keep going? Can you make multiple lines of math? Recently, as recent as a couple months ago, we've allowed our users to simply just hit the enter key, which is, you know, comparable to you typing in a Google Doc in general. If I type the enter key, Notice the alignment features that show up now here on this palette. So I can align my math. So as I continue to make more math on line two, I can then align it whether I want it left adjusted, right adjusted, center adjusted, or I could even align by equal sign. So I'm just going to type in some random things here like 8x squared. Maybe I'm doing uh, systems of equations here, 8x squared plus, uh, I don't know, 17y. Uh, cubed, we'll flip this around, equals, oh, that went askew, right that, and I do equals uh, 15, and notice I now have the option, it's already aligned left by default, but I can align by center, notice that 8x squared just jumped over just a tad, or maybe I want to align right, it jumped over again, or maybe I want to align by relation. So if I line by relation as a former math teacher myself, I like my kids to line up their math and put the symbols under one another. We also can add columns. You might go, well, why do we want a column there? Well, think about this. A lot of times, you know, we want to make sure kids understand what they're making. So what if I added a column to the right here and I asked students to justify why they did what they did? So I can click insert text and I can type something at random here, and I'm just typing in a blurb. And I can have students justify, like, I subtracted 8y on both sides of the equation because. So whatever you wanted to do, you can incorporate wording with the math to explain their answer. And I'm just going to pop this right into a Google Doc right now. I'm going to close Equatio briefly, and notice that I've made some math and inserted that into a Google Doc. Now. You might not be aware, if you're not aware of our product or haven't used it, the way we make our math is we put it in a picture format. And since we use pictures, we can put things behind the pictures. And when I say things, I'm talking about alternative text. So when I right click on the image and I go down to alt text, notice here that this is where the screen reader can read the math using the Google product. So I can access the alt text as long as I insert the image uh, with math. So a really, really neat feature to be able to include all students and to provide that alt text so screen readers, whether it be JAWS or MBDA, uh, to recognize that math and to be able to help those students as well. Uh, down the road, since, uh, since I am the product manager evangelist for this, I can tell you that we are also uh, looking at uh, very closely, I think it's going to happen, uh, we're going to put the alt text up here under title and we're going to give you guys the math ML down here in the description. So if you want more Math ML, that's coming in a future product release for us. Um, so that'll be really good for those users that want access to that Math ML. Yes, ma'am. Good question. I already know what you're going to ask. So she asked, 
uh, yeah, and that's actually, it's in one of my slides, but I, I wanted to do more demo than read slides to you. She asked, what happens if you put the picture into the Google Doc? You might be thinking a misconception is, is that the picture cannot be edited. Well, not true with our product. So she said, what if a student made a mistake and inserted the math? I can click back on the image and I can go down to edit math. And when I do that, I can open this back up. And what she essentially asked is maybe this was supposed to be a 14. And when I go and insert that math, it will update in real time into that Google Doc. And maybe her next question would be, well, did it update the alt text too? Well, we can check that. When I left click and right click, go to the alt text, notice the 14 updated also. So really, really uh, powerful that we can bring those images back into our product and make those changes or edits. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and cancel that. And we also, just to go over some of these other input options, I talked to you all about LaTeX uh, just briefly. Uh, this is your LaTeX input method right here. If I go here though and type in, let's say the quadratic formula, notice how we give you the LaTeX, we make that for you, uh, and we provide the quadratic formula here. Uh, I could do another one. I, I don't know how many of you went to school to learn LaTeX, I know me personally did not, uh, but what if I wanted to do the correlation coefficient of sample, a much more complex formula? So what if I wanted to do that? And now the LaTeX is here if you want it, and the formula is here if you want that. So I can insert that math. So notice that this right here is a formula uh, in upper level uh, algebra, geometry, and correlation coefficient of sample is now inputted right into your Google Doc. So uh, really awesome that we can access that prediction bank and add those formulas in. Also in our product is handwriting recognition, and I can simply come over here my laptop doesn't fall, and I can scribble some math into this box. Maybe you need more room, so you can drag that up and you can make more math underneath it. Notice the handwriting recognition uh, is, is captured and it translates that into digital. So 3y squared minus 3x equals 9. Uh, back to kind of her question, can this be edited? What if kids' handwriting is not very good? Well, if it's not very good or it's not legible by our, by our engine here, you can always go over here and make the adjustment. So maybe the X was supposed to be a Y and it picked up the wrong letter. So that can be adjusted as well. And then you can insert that math. The other item here that we'll go over just briefly is our speech input. So if we want to record and capture math, we can hit the record button, 2X squared minus 4Y equals 8. And notice, it's gonna hear my words and it didn't do a very good job in the beginning, probably because the noise and the sound that's in here, and I'm using an internal mic on my computer, which obviously is not very good, but I can go here and edit this as well. So if I really want to, I can go back and insert, I think I said 2x, I don't remember what I said at this point, uh, 2x squared maybe, so I can do 2x squared minus 4y equals eight. Uh, we'll get rid of that, and anything can be edited right there on the fly. Uh, other objects and things I wanted to show you is, we know that users are using lots of PDFs still, so I wanted to capture this for you, and I don't have a ton of time to show you everything our product can do, but notice how I've opened up a standard PDF. So if I have a PDF in front of me, currently this math here is not accessible. What I can do though is, now remember, I'm out of Google Docs, so my toolbar at the bottom is gone but I can go and click on the Equatio extension here, and when I do that, I'm given two options, a screenshot reader and discoverability. Discoverability is if you, if you want, as you're browsing the internet, it can find math for you, and you can capture that and bring that into whatever platform you're using, but I'm gonna show you the screenshot reader, and let's say I wanna capture that problem right there. Two lines, line yes. one, negative three x minus three y equals three line two, y equals negative five x minus 17. Okay, so it read the math out loud, told you line one versus line two. So a lot of students won't want that, won't want to ask, or they're embarrassed to ask for that problem to be repeated. So we could play this problem again if they had a headphones or whatever, they could listen to it as many times as they want. I can also click on more options 
And this is where you can get to the LaTeX or the MathML. So let's say I'm a teacher and I see this problem uh, that the publisher shared with me through a PDF and I want to copy this problem and put it into a Google Doc or maybe into a Google Form. I can copy the LaTeX right here and I can go back to my Google Doc and I will go back to this LaTeX editor and simply tap Control V. And notice that we just took that math off of a PDF. We've now made it over here. And when I insert this now into my Google Doc, you will see here that we have made an Equatio image, which then what? Provides that alt text for those students who need that accessibility. So we took that math from a PDF. We can also, and I don't have this queued up right here, but it takes me just a second. What if I'm browsing and I see a video uh, on Sal Khan's website, and it's about calculus and limits? and I really like the problem he's doing, I can also go right into the video and I can use the screenshot reader here as well. So take a look. There's a problem at the very, very top. I'm gonna grab the Equatio screenshot reader out of the extension and I'm going to capture, let's see if it can read Sal Khan's yellow highlighter. Goes. f of x equals the fraction with numerator x minus 1 and denominator x minus 1 right double arrow f of x equals you, you get the idea so we don't need to play the whole thing and then we can go and capture that as well and i can copy that law tech or that math ml and bring that also over to google so i'm going to move my cursor i'm going to go to law tech and i'm going to erase everything in my box and control v Notice that it just took that math, made the LaTeX from that Salcon video, and look what we made for you right over here. That exact problem that we just saw out in Chrome in that video, and now it's in a Google Doc and it's accessible. So I can right click on it, go to Alt Text, and you'll notice the text is there. Uh, I know we only have about one minute left, and I didn't get to much of the Microsoft integration, but I'm gonna tell you that it works very much the same. So if I open a Word document and I'm using Microsoft and I click on the Equatio Windows app for Equatio, you'll see that this is a little bit slower, like I told you at the very beginning. It'll open here in just a second, hopefully. There it is. And you will notice that I have the same input methods in the Microsoft atmosphere, except for one, and that is the inserting of math spaces. So you will not have access to that one button, but Word will provide you with the exact same uh, mechanism. So I can open a PDF, let's say. So here's a PDF that I opened. I'm gonna use the Microsoft Screenshot Reader, and I'm going to grab this problem here. Let's give this a listen and a try. Limit over x right arrow 2 of the fraction with numerator the square root of 2 x cubed plus 9 plus 3 x minus 1 and denominator 4 x plus 1. So I can copy that math ML, which I just did. And let's say I want to paste that now in Word. This always takes an extra second here. Of course, it depends on the Wi-Fi and then my Word stopped responding. I'll give it a second. There it goes. So now that's MathML, and that now can be read by the screen reader. And again, the MathML can be read character by character by character. So I don't know about you, but I would not want to make this math using this toolbar, I mean, me personally. So these are, these are the other uh, input methods that Google gives you and Microsoft gives you. Uh, I can make the math a lot quicker and do a lot more textbook conversion using Equatio versus using the Microsoft Word editor. Or if I go back to my Google Doc here, uh, the Google Doc is very, very limited in what they give you. So if I go to insert an equation here, you'll notice that this is the math options I have with Google Docs. And I personally would rather make it using our product and using the prediction engine. So uh, I appreciate you all staying. I'm already one minute over. Kira, question?
Yeah, we'd love to send you information. I know I have the mic, it's harder. We'd love to send you information if you're interested in more uh, information about our product. I'm gonna be over at the booth for the next day and a half or so. Kira would love to scan your badge and we'd love to follow up with you guys and provide you uh, some more information about our product. I appreciate you guys staying and listening. Thank you.